We're also going to be installing some 12 hole injectors, replacing the stock single hole injectors. So, uh, let me get some stuff ready and we'll be back. On the injectors, uh, just opening up a little bit of room for myself, I was able to remove the top of the air box using the two hose clamps uh, and then the top of the uh, uh, intake that bolts down onto the throttle body. Uh, that removes with this hose clamp right here um, and then you're able to get that all out of the way. At this point, I'm swinging the throttle cables out. I was able to loosen them all up off of the uh, arm over here and now I'm just loosening the bracket that holds the cables. Uh, once I can get this out of the way, should just be able to swing Oop, one more bolt. Right here. Expect these bolts to be a little bit crusty as this is the hot side of the motor. It might be a good idea to soak these in PB blast say, ahead of time or something. Alright, got the second one out. Now this bracket can just get swung right out of the way. Pin it up on that side of the motor. Alright, now this should give us access to our injectors one two three uh four five and six in the back so let me take another look and i'll get back to you guys in a few minutes all right guys two quick tips so uh, in order to release the pressure out of your fuel rail there is a small cap screw that comes off and there is a schrader valve behind that uh, basically what you're going to want to do before disconnecting anything further is going to be taking a small screwdriver and pressing in the Schrader valve. This will release the amount of fuel that's stored in the Schrader valve, so you won't have anything spraying out on you later. Uh, going further on that, this is also a uh, good tool to diagnose a fuel pump, as if you walk under here and you can press the Schrader valve in, if no fuel comes out, you can, uh, you can be pretty well certain that you're having an issue with your fuel delivery system. So uh, just two, two quick tips for you guys. All right, I'll be back. All right guys, so uh, one of the few specialty tools that you'll need to uh, get this job done is a gas line removal tool. Uh, basically, it's a, an item uh, that you're gonna use to get this connection uh, out. This is, in a, for all intents and purposes, a quick connect that uh, has a spring-loaded feature on the inside. So what this does is it wraps right around the gas line, just like that. You end up pushing it in, and then you can remove the entire gas line. So. Uh, just keep that in mind before you start the project that you'll need one of these. All right, so we're just getting to the point of removing the fuel rail. Uh, there's going to be four bolts that you're going to have to remove from what I can tell so far. One here, another one here, a third one here, and a fourth one back over there. Um, so I just cracked them and at this point I'm just loosening the bolts. All right. All right, so uh, one quick tip for you guys. I have the fuel rail ready to be taken out. Right before I pulled it out, I had kind of noticed down in here, there's uh, quite a bit of gunk. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is really just kind of loosen that up. You can tell that once I pull the injector out, uh, that it'll get, all of that stuff has the potential to fall right inside the motor. So all you're gonna wanna do is grab a little screwdriver like that and a shop vac, and we should be able to get most of that out. All right guys, so uh, as you can see, we've cleaned up quite a bit of the gunk back here. There's still a little bit that's always inevitable, but uh, dealing with 20 year old vehicles, but we'll, uh, we'll do what we can to try to keep this thing clean. At this point now, I've sprayed a little bit of WD-40 right on top of all of the injectors, and we're getting ready to pull it out. Um, from what I've been told, should be able just to give it a little bit of a pull, but it's pretty stout. Oh, found one more bolt. We'll be back. So uh, tried to take the fuel rail out. I actually ended up finding out that there are some studs that end up going in here that uh, hold on a uh, wiring connection. So even if you take out the first bolt, uh, your fuel rail is still disconnected. Uh, still will need to be disconnected. So with that said, uh, we should be ready to pull it out. It does seem loose. We're gonna start giving it a little bit of a shake here and there. All right, got the back out and got the front out. So. Now we will need to take these connectors out. 
when I can tell, I should be able to get up on the red bracket. So uh, it might be a good idea before you pull the, the fuel rail out while it's still affixed to the engine to get rid of the, to disconnect these plugs. Uh, basically what you gotta do is take a little screwdriver, pull up on them there, and then you can kind of just wiggle them out right off the fuel rail and they should just pop right out. So uh, you got six of those to do obviously and uh, should take care of that. So All right guys, so uh, now that we've gotten the fuel rail disconnected, we have to remove the old injectors. Uh, you can see they're held on with these clips right here. Um, they basically come off if you take a screwdriver and just sort of pop them right off. They just shoot right out. So we'll do that to the last three. And should be all done with that step. And then we'll be able to pull out the injectors. Now to pull out the injectors that we can just wiggle them right out. I can feel it sort of coming right out. All right, we're gonna take a little bit of WD-40, put it right into the manifold right here, the fuel rail. All right, now we're gonna try that again. pop right out let's see it looks like it well kept one uh one o-ring stuck in there so we'll have to get that out with a pick afterwards but not bad gotta do the same thing to the other six all right guys so uh at this point now we have uh, cleaned up the fuel rail we took uh, an abrasive cloth and just cleaned up the outside of it took off any loose rust i'd love to paint it if i had the time but uh wouldn't be back in today and i wouldn't be able to get home today if i did that so uh, with that said, uh, we then took a little bit of brake clean, sprayed those into the uh, injector ports, and then took a paper towel and cleaned those out, taking care to uh, get any loose fibers back out again. So um, with that said, we should be ready to take a little bit of white lithium grease, uh, apply that into the injector ports, and that should help loosen up the installation of the new 12-hole Riemann uh, reman, uh, blah, 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 remanufactured injectors. Uh, you can kind of tell the difference between them if you see the uh, single hole in the, uh, the OEM injector right here and then the 12 hole injector right here. Should produce a much better atomization of the fuel and uh, hopefully better fuel economy and power, but we'll see. All right, uh, so I'm going to put some lube right on the uh, injector O-rings and we'll install them. I'm just trying to orient this in the same manner that it's going to go back into the car. So we should need this point getting installed into the injector port with the plug up. That's a bad way to go. Liberally install that. And I should just be able to ever so lightly wiggle it in, press it in. I just want to keep going until it won't go in any further. So that should be it. Uh, injectors uh, with the clips back on them all installed back into the fuel rail brought the fuel rail back out added a little bit of white lithium grease to the o-rings um, that go into the uh, manifold and we also did clean out the manifold ports as well so uh, with that said uh, we can start installing them uh, really it's just lining them up I mean we got the grease to uh, ride against the walls making sure that all of the injectors line up with the holes and pushing them in so that should be it. All the bolt holes line up. Should be good to go. All right.
Now that we've gotten the fuel rail installed, we've uh, added our final connections. Um, we just put those back on exactly the same way we took them off. We had reinstalled our fuel line. Uh, we haven't put our throttle cables and stuff back on yet. We haven't reinstalled our air box, but uh, we're gonna give this a quick test run to see if it works. Uh, quick tip, we did end up removing the uh, Schrader cap again, putting the uh, paper towels underneath it and cycling a key a few times and draining the uh, Schrader valve, just trying to prime the fuel rail so that it has fuel in it and avoid rough idle. Uh, with that said, let's give it a shot. All right, so seems to be working out well. Um, so I'll shut it back off again and we'll be able to reinstall the whole airbox.